Okay. So today, as we already put the message, uh, today we're going to study about the tabernacle. So first of all, let us uh, see why and how God had given this provision of the tabernacle. <clears throat> we all know that this uh, provision of the tabernacle, God had uh, arranged uh, during uh, the journey of uh, people of Israel in the wilderness. And later on, you see that the uh, same tabernacle, uh, the same things were uh, implemented in the temple built by Solomon. So, dear then, so the things uh, that are uh, here mentioned in the tabernacle, God uh, showed it through the vision to Moses on uh, Mount Sinai and commanded that everything to be, you see, strictly uh, maintained in the construction, in the implementation, and uh, you see, in the offering of the sacrifices and various uh, things uh, uh, in the tabernacle. And any violation in uh, any of those things, uh, uh, God uh, told uh, that uh, the penalty would be death. Why? Why such a strict uh, law God had made, if you see? Because uh, the things which are uh, there in the tabernacle, you see, the holy, the most holy, the various other things and all, it was actually a shadow of the heavenly things. Uh, you see? So, hence God told any violation in the construction or the performance of the, you see, things uh, mentioned uh, uh, of the tabernacle would uh, attract uh, death. We can read that one in uh, Hebrews uh, 8, chapter verse 5. Uh, Ashish, brother, can you read? Is it possible? Okay, brother. Who oh. serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For she, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern, see to thee in the mount. Yes. So, you see, that thou make all things according to the pattern, show to thee in the mount. And any violation, you see, God told that uh, strict, then the one day penalty would be death. That is mentioned in Numbers uh, 4.15. Now, why did uh, first uh, God give this tabernacle? Let us uh, first uh, study this one and go to the each and every intricate uh, things that are mentioned in the tabernacle. First of all, why did God give this tabernacle? You see, the things mentioned in the tabernacle, it almost uh, seems that, uh, you see, each and every thing uh, are uh, almost equal to things uh, that are, uh, you see, today done in the uh, Gentile temples. You see, uh, where we have the court, where we have the holy place, where we have the most holy place, only the high priest is allowed and not ordinary persons allowed into the most holy place. Why did God ever give this, uh, you see, the ceremony of the tabernacle? Dear brethren, if you see, God uh, had actually given the law to the people of Israel. And the law had so much of power that if anybody kept the law without even breaking a single commandment, that man would continue to live on this earth without receiving any penalty from God. That means he would never die. He could sustain life and live if he would uh, completely keep the law. That is mentioned in Galatians 3.12. Can you read with us? Galatians 3.12. <clears throat> and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. See, the man that doeth them shall live by them. So, the man that keeps the law shall live by the law. So if you see, did anybody keep the law? No, none of the people could keep the law because all were sinners, all were fallen from the grace of God. Romans, you see, 10, 23, it clearly says, no, every man has sinned and fallen short of the grace of God. So as all are sinners, none could keep the perfect law. So what happened? This law, which could give eternal life to mankind, became a failure. That's what we read in, uh, you see, uh, Romans uh, 8, uh, 3. Please read, brother, Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God mm. sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Yes, very good. So, for the law, for what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh. Because of the weakness of mankind, the law was not successful. Hence, the law was failure. But yet, 
God gave an opportunity for the people of Israel. He said, if you sing, not a problem. I will give you one more opportunity. You can continue and try to keep the law again and again. So what was the provision which God had made where the entire nation's sins were forgiven and another opportunity was given to keep the law. So that is the provision of the atonement day sacrifice. Yearly once this sacrifice was given for the entire nation and the entire nation's sins were totally forgiven. By forgiving their sins, they had one more opportunity to keep the law for the entire year. You see? So whatever your sins uh, you did, they were totally forgiven by the sacrifice of the atonement is sacred. You see? But even after giving this sacrifice, even after forgiving their sins, the people of Israel could never keep the law. Hence, uh, the provision of the tabernacle was given for the people of Israel, that they may attain this eternal life by obtaining forgiveness year on year. Okay. Now let us come to the construction. The construction of the tabernacle, you see, the table, the various pillars, uh, the various curtains, uh, the various altar, you see, everything is given to us in the book of Exodus, chapter 25 to 27. And the performance, how the sacrifice has to be given and how each and every, you see, sacrifice has to be slaughtered and how it has to be offered that is pleasing to God. That is given to us in Exodus 35 to chapter 40. So, when you are free, I request kindly to go through these chapters for a better understanding. Now, let us come how the tabernacle was constructed. So what all things were there in the tabernacle? The tabernacle, first of all, had a court. The court was 150 feet, uh, you see, long and 75 feet uh, in width. And inside this court, uh, there was, uh, you see, the main portion called as the tabernacle proper. And uh, the tabernacle proper, you see, was uh, 15 feet wide, 15 feet height, and 45 feet in length. So this was called the tabernacle proper. You see, in the book of, uh, you see, Exodus, whenever the Bible says, uh, you see, the tabernacle, the tabernacle, mm -hmm. it was actually speaking about this particular portion. Now, this tabernacle proper was divided into two parts. The first part, you see, was uh, called as the most holy place. It was 15 feet in height, 15 feet in width, and 15 feet in, you see, length. That means it was a perfect cuboid. This was the first portion called as the most holy. And the next portion was called as the holy. This was actually much similar to the most holy, but only the length was 30 feet. That means the height and the width was 15 feet, but the length of it was 30 feet. That was called as the holy of the tabernacle. The construction, the material used in the tabernacle was actually, you see, acacia wood. Each and every wood items were made out of acacia wood. Why? Why did God particularly choose this acacia wood? If you see, this acacia wood had some uh, particular qualities that it, it just uh, never uh, eaten by moth and it had a good fragrance. And uh, you, you see, uh, that was lightweight also. Hence, uh, God chose, uh, you see, uh, uh, this uh, uh, acacia wood or uh, in other Bibles, some Bibles it is translated as cedar also. So cedar or acacia wood. And it has got some aromatic uh, incense smell also. So perfume smell is also there. Hence God told to use this acacia wood. And this uh, uh, wood, using this wood only, they used to construct the pillars. And uh, each and every pillar was plated with uh, gold, uh, you see, covering. Now why did God put only gold covering upon the wood? 
God had blessed the people of Israel so much that when they came out of Egypt, they borrowed all the jewels. You see, there was so much of gold. But why did God just plate the wood with gold? He could have used this solid gold. Why? Why means, if you see, compared to all the metals, the specific gravity of gold is much higher than all the metals. You see? What does it mean? What does it mean the specific gravity is much higher than all the other metals? Like for example, if you hold a 100 grams iron in your hand and the 100 grams gold in your other hand, the gravitational pull of gold is much higher compared to all the other metals. And because of this gravitational pull, you see, the specific gravity, this gold, if it was made out of solid gold, and tabernacle, it would have been very difficult for the people of Israel to transport in the wilderness. Because the tabernacle was not in a fixed place. It was to be, you see, constructed when God told to stop. Whenever the people were supposed to journey, again, the dismantled work had to be done. And again, it has to be transported at God at particularly instructed. Any violation of it would have been death. In such a case, you see, if the uh, pillars were made of solid gold, it would have been very heavy for the people of Israel to move, travel in the wilderness. Wilderness must imagine the desert land, how it was possible. Therefore, God told to use wood and plate it with gold. So it was plated, you see, with gold platings. Okay, now the pillars were made like this and uh, one to one next to each other. You see, the golden pillars were placed uh, next to each other, and each of these uh, pillars was placed inside a silver socket. You see, see, you can see here this is the pillar, and at the bottom of the pillar, you can see, see, the spikes are there. Those spikes were inserted into the silver sockets. These silver sockets were buried deep in the sand. And in these uh, silver sockets, uh, you see, the pillars uh, of the tabernacle were placed. You can see here, the silver sockets buried in the ground. And inside uh, these uh, silver sockets, uh, you see, the pillar were, uh, you see, uh, capped uh, inside. So, uh, as it was kept plugged inside, it would have, uh, you see, fixed very strongly. And after fixing, you see, a rod is to be immersed uh, in between uh, these uh, golden pillars. Uh, this made it so strong that any wind, you see, could never shake uh, the tabernacle even a little bit also. So this is how the tabernacle was constructed. You see, you can see more clearly in the video how the silver uh, sockets were placed in the ground and uh, above which uh, the, you see, the golden pillars were placed and how the rods uh, were inserted in between to have that uh, protection of interlocking uh, system so that uh, any weather condition would never uh, destroy the tabernacle. So this is how the tabernacle was constructed. So, the tabernacle, as we told, was uh, of two portions, the most holy and the holy place. So, in between the holy and the most holy, they were actually uh, four, uh, you see, five pillars uh, that were placed. So, that was made out of a golden pillar, but placed in uh, silver sockets. But at the entrance of the holy, the pillars were made of gold and was uh, sockets were made of copper. So, upon these uh, partitions or the entrance to the holy and the most holy, there was a veil that was put or uh, uh, even the gate uh, was uh, made out of a particular material which God had instructed. And that material was, it was made out of a white linen cloth. And upon the white linen cloth, using three colors of thread, the image of a cherub was supposed to be made like a, a blue, scarlet and purple thread. Using these three, see the image of uh, the curtain was like that. The cherubs uh, were designed. And this was placed at the 
entrance of the mostoli that was called as the first uh, veil and at the entrance of the mostoli that was called as the second veil and with the same uh, type of material again the covering for the entire tabernacle was made it was actually covered with four types of uh, materials one first one was the uh, linen cloth with a uh, you see uh, <clears throat> design of a uh, cherubs upon the white linen cloth uh, and the badger skin and the ram skin dyed uh, red uh, you see uh, sorry go, second is goat's the hair and third is the ram skin dyed red and the uh, last one is the badger skin badger skin means the seal you see you have the seal which lives in the sea no uh, so it is also called as the water elephant so this covering was used to cover the tabernacle so as if it was uh, looking like a uh, the lorry which was covered with an entire tarpaul so this was for the protection of the sun and the rain so uh, it had a coat also you see uh, you can see uh, the tabernacle the first portion as soon as you enter the gate was the coat this coat was made out of a linen cloth pure white linen cloth and it was surrounded by pillars this linen cloth hung on you see wooden pillars placed in copper sockets you see this is how the pillars were made and round about it the white uh, you see linen cloth was there so entire uh, tabernacle was covered with this uh, uh, coat uh, which was uh, made up of a white uh, linen cloth and uh, what was the entrance how was the entrance if you see there was one gate that is called uh, you see as the gate and uh, that was again made out of the same material which was made uh, of the first veil and the second the same design the same material was used and only one entrance was there that is called the gate so outside this court much far away you see was uh, the camp of israel the camp of israel was never close to the tabernacle they were supposed to live very far from the tabernacle so this is how the tabernacle was placed but as soon as you enter the tabernacle from the gate just before our eyes there was a huge uh, brazen altar that was clearly visible to everybody and this brazen altar was 4 and 1/2 feet tight 7 and 1/2 feet uh, width and uh, this was made out of uh, you see again it was made out of acacia wood and uh, plated with uh, copper uh, you see uh, metals you see now why did uh, copper or brass metals you see uh, upon this uh, brazen altar only the people of israel used to suffer sacrifice all their sacrificing as burnt offerings to the lord and after this uh, a brazen altar if you come a little bit further there was a portion you see there was a item that is called as laver you see the laver had a water content in it the laver was made out of pure copper you see crystal clear copper where one's face could have been clearly seen so in this laver the priest after offering sacrifices to the lord he is to wash his hands and uh, there was a small uh, you see uh, jug also given to him for a support you see to take out the water from the laver and uh, clean himself up. so if you walk a little bit further we have the first compartment called as the holy place so if you go into the holy there were three you see metals uh, that were uh, in the holy place first of all you see on the right side yeah, we have you see that is on the north direction we have the, the table of the shoe bread again here also the table of the shoe bread was constructed with uh, acacia wood and uh, completely covered with golden plates upon the tabernacle of the uh, you see upon the table of the shoe bread they were loaves kept you see six and six uh, uh, portions of those here six loaves of bread here six loaves of bread as uh, displayed in the video 
You see, these loaves were bread. These were replaced every Sabbath day. And upon the top of uh, each, uh, you see, row of uh, bread, they used to keep one fist of uh, incense upon it. And this incense only, the priest, every day morning and evening, used to put on the incense altar. Just opposite to it, on the south direction, you see, there was a golden candlestick. This golden candlestick was made out of pure gold. It was not made of wood and plated with gold, but rather, this was the only item in the second only item that was completely made of pure gold. And it had a lot of designs also. It we will be studying God winning in higher classes. So, this, uh, uh, you see, the golden uh, lampstand had seven lamps. And the high priest was supposed to trim it daily, morning and evening, and put oil into it and make sure that the light of the tabernacle never gets off. See? And uh, in between those two items, just very close to the second veil was a golden incense altar. Here, the golden incense altar was again uh, constructed with uh, pure uh, you see, acacia wood and uh, covered with uh, gold, uh, you see, plates. Upon this uh, incense altar, the priest used to bring the coal from the brazen altar and place it upon it and take the incense that was placed on the uh, shoe bread and offer it uh, daily morning and evening uh, on this uh, incense altar. And this uh, incense, the smoke used to pass on to the second veil and cover the entire you see most holy which was very pleasing to God so next if you come it further to go beyond the second veil we have the most holy there was only one item in the most holy that is the ark of the covenant you see the, the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant was again made up of acacia wood covered with gold platings you see and inside this Ark of the Covenant, there were only three items. What were they? Let us read Hebrews 9, chapter 4 and 5. Uh, read Brash. Which are the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and the Aaron's rod that bought it and the Tables of the covenant, and over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat of which cannot, which we cannot speak now particularly. Mm. So here, Apostle Paul gives the clues that uh, there was a golden pot inside which there was a manna, you see, and uh, there was a, you see, the ten uh, tablets, there was a two tablets having the ten commandments. And Aaron's budded rod. So upon this Ark of the Covenant, you see, the mercy seat was there. This was the only item, the second only item that was made out of pure gold. Pure gold, solid gold. The design was such that the uh, two carols were designed, okay, with uh, wings touching each other and the face looking the Shekinah glory. As if ready to fly. In between these two angels, uh, there is to be a Shekinah glory that was always used to shine brightly. That signifies the presence of the Lord. Upon this Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat, the high priest, yearly once, he used to take the blood of the bullock and goats and uh, you see, and uh, pour it upon the Shekinah glory. This is to satisfy God's justice. So, dear brethren, this is the typical construction and the typical uh, things that are mentioned in the tabernacle. Now, what are the things? Uh, huh? All does it mean? What is the meaning of all these things? Uh? What is the meaning of all the things that are mentioned? You see, in the tabernacle, Apostle Paul clearly says in Hebrews 8 chapter, verse 1 and 5, that, uh, you see, dear brethren, uh, these uh, are the type of the things, uh, you see, of heavenly things. In verse 5 it says, no, who serve unto example and shadow of heavenly things. Shadow of heavenly things. This is a shadow, you see, of uh, 
the temple in heaven where God Himself is uh, residing. In Colossians two fourteen, He says, "No, huh? read brother Colossians two fourteen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, kneeling it to his cross. Okay, Colossians 2, uh, 17, brother. 17, read, brother, please. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Very good, brother. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. You see, which was a shadow. This was never the real thing. It was just a model. In Hebrews 10, 1, it says... Law having a shadow of good things to come. It was just a shadow. So real things are mentioned in Christ. So what is the meaning of it? You see, first of all, you see, the tabernacle was divided into, you see, two parts. You see, the things that were made out of uh, gold, which were in holy and the whole, most holy place. But the things in the court was made out of brass and copper. Why these two metals, if you see, Dear brethren, gold in the Bible signifies divine nature. The nature which God himself is having. And copper or brass in the Bible signifies human nature. You see, copper and gold are much similar. But they are not one and the same. We can say that brass or copper is in the image of gold. But it is never the true one. Similarly, man was created in the image of God. But he was not uh, God himself. Uh, you see. They were similarities, but he was never God. Therefore, today we use no items. Huh? Golden watch. Huh? It's not really gold. But golden coated. So all these things are made of brass and copper and coated with gold. So it is duplicate gold, you can say. It is an image of gold. So similarly, man is in the image of God. So gold always in the Bible signifies divine nature. And uh, copper or brass in the Bible signifies human nature. So the two types of metal used here signifies, uh, you see, the heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. The people who go to the divine nature and the earthly salvation, people come to the earthly salvation. So, here if you see, much far from this uh, tabernacle was the camp. You see, very far. That means... Uh, this represents the world who are very far from Christ, who can never come to Christ. You see, because they are very far, they are forbidden to come. If they ever have to come, you see, they have to come, you see, through only one gate, by crossing the court. Without crossing the court, without entering the gate, nobody can come inside. If they have to come, they have to you see, cross the court and only come. You see, what does it signify court? The court represents, it was made up of white linen cloth. And what does the Bible say about white linen cloth? It means the righteousness of the saints. Read Bar, Revelation 19.8 with us. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. See, the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So, righteousness of the saints, sir. fine linen. So, linen cloth represents the righteousness. That means we are justified by the blood of Christ. Hence, we are righteous in the sight of God. So, if any man has to come to the presence of God from the world, leaving the world, it is only after believing in Jesus and by justifying, you see, after trusting in the blood of Christ. Without trusting in the blood of Christ, we can never be justified before God. Then only we can enter into the presence of God. Now, how do we enter? Can we just jump off and come in a shortcut way? No. There is only one gate. Now, who is that one? Only one gate. Huh? The one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only mediator. You see, in Acts 4, it says, no, there is no other 
a salvation in any other name than the name of Jesus. You see, there is only one name given under heaven for man to be saved. And that is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if any man has to be saved, it is only by believing in Jesus. So Jesus also said now, huh? John 10, 9, I am the door. Huh? Read with her, John 10, 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. Okay. If you want to be saved, it is only through this one gate. Who is that only one gate? That is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is not God, but he is the Son of God, through which we have access to God. You see, therefore, huh? as soon as we come inside uh, the tabernacle, there are three parts. One is the court, other is the holy place, third one is the most holy place. What does these three represent? Jesus said, no, I am the life, I am the truth and the way. You see, I am the life, the truth and the way. So Jesus is the life. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the only way to God. He himself is not God. You see, many people in the churches believe that Jesus himself is God. No, no, no. We can call Jesus as God, but not a problem. But there is only one true almighty God. And uh, he is the father of Lord Jesus Christ. He, if you need to go to him, it is only through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no, John 46, I am the way, the truth, and life. So, as soon as we come into the tabernacle, a huge big thing that, that we can see, the first thing that we can see is the brazen altar. Big uh, seven feet uh, brazen altar. You see, what does it represent? Uh, upon this brazen altar, okay, all the sacrifices were given. Now, who is the only one sacrifice? The Lamb of God, uh, which brought us salvation. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist saying, Jesus said not. Uh, you see, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of all the world. Not only Christians, did not, did not, Jesus did not die only for Christians. But he died for the entire mankind. This brazen altar signifies, you see, the ransom sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave his life for Adam. Through Adam, as death came upon everybody, through a, a salvation of Adam, through saving of Adam, the entire mankind through him will be saved. This is the concept of ransom. Jesus is not only the savior of Christians, but he's the savior of the whole world. He's not only our personal savior, but the savior of the whole world. Therefore, the brazen altar represents the sac ransom sacrifice. After accepting Jesus as the ransom sacrifice, if we come further, we have a labor. Labor, the priest, after sacrificing, you, you see, he is to clean himself with his water. Well, what does the Bible say about water? The water means the word of God. You see, if you see in the labor, our uh, image was clearly visible. So, if you see the word of God, if you read the word of God, it reflects our true character. How we are, what we are, what we are trying to do, that reflects our character, dear brethren. Therefore, the labor and the water inside it represents the word of God. So, daily, if we uh, have any, you see, impurities in us, how should we clean? It is uh, cleansed by the word of God. We need to wash uh, ourselves daily, you see, by taking this water. You see, and how is the water we are taken? Small jug, uh, so many sources, so many, you see, Bible studies, uh, you see, Bible meetings, uh, these types of, uh, you see, in-depth Bible study helps us to take more out of the word of God and cleanse ourselves, uh, isn't it? So let us read, you see, uh, Ephesians 5.26, please. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. See? That he might cleanse us with the washing of water. That is the word of God. You see? The word of God is the one that cleanses us. There is also 2 Corinthians 3.18, James 1st chapter 22 to 25. You can read it. Okay, later. Thank you. Then, if you come a little bit further, you have the holy place. Now, how do we go to the holy place? 
Can we just open the veil like this, like a curtain and go just inside? No. The veil was almost, uh, you see, huh? almost uh, the veil was five inches thick. You see? And uh, all the Levites uh, were never allowed to go inside the holy. Among the Levites, only the priest was allowed to go inside the holy every day, morning and evening. So similarly, huh? Just by being a believer in a court, we can't understand the deep things of God. If we need to understand the deep things of God, we need to come inside. We need to come a little bit further, one step further. That is how, you see, pass beyond the veil. How do we pass it? We can't uh, just open it like a curtain and go. No, 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 no. The veil was fine, just uh, tick. We remember when Jesus said, what happened? The veil was torn from top to bottom. So if we need to go inside the, uh, you see, holy, uh, passing through the first veil, we need to bend ourselves. You see, we need to bend ourselves and then only, you see, go. You need to bow ourselves. What does it represent, sir? Jesus said, no, if any man wants to be my disciple, what he should do? What he should do with her? Ashish, brother, tell me what he should do. Deny himself. Hmm. Very good, brother. Deny himself. Carry the cross. Follow him. John, sorry, Luke 14, 26 to 27. If any man wants to be my disciple, so anybody who is outside the holy place, you see, not had come inside the first veil, he still wear in the court condition. He might think he is acceptable to God. No, no, no. He is just a believer. He is not the follower of Christ. We studied this one in the class of church now. So, we need to be followers of Christ, not just believers of Christ. Now, how do we become a follower from believer? We need to offer ourselves for a living sacrifice. You see, we need to sacrifice for God. Not that we receive only blessings from God. Therefore, uh, Apostle Paul tells in Romans 12, no, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. So, once if we accept to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, then only we can come into the holy. As soon as we come into the holy, what is there? Everything is covered. There is no sunlight at all. Only the golden walls. And what is there inside? What is the only light there? The light from the lampstand. No other light is there. See the grandness, dear brother. Just imagine if you're living in a golden room and there's only lamp glowing, how the gold will glitter. It will be much brighter than sun. You see, glittering uh, and uh, that uh, vision, that the sight is so, you see, the splendor. You see, that is great. Uh, you see, brightness. Uh, you see, what does that represent? Uh, that represents uh, the understanding of the word of God. When you are a believer and you decide to become the followers of Christ, when we consecrate our life to God, when we immerse ourselves into the death of Christ, when we take a baptism in a proper way. So, as soon as we come into the holy, there are two or three things there. You see? Huh? There is a candlestick, and opposite to the candlestick, there is a table of the shoe bread. So, candlestick. Huh? You see? The high priest used to come and trim daily, morning and evening, and put a extra oil. Huh? So what does the oil represent in the Bible? What does the oil represent, brother? Ashish, brother? Holy Spirit. Very good. Holy Spirit. Huh? God tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How? Morning and evening. Continuously you should be filled with the Holy Spirit or else you will get leaked. So, daily we need to Understand more, read more of the word of God. You see, then only what will happen? We will shine brightly. Because this candlestick shines brightly, we are able to see what is there on the table opposite. If there is no light, can we see? Can you identify? No. With the Holy Spirit only, we are able to understand the Bible. Why so many Christians don't understand the Bible today? Because lack of Holy Spirit. How do we understand the word of God? It is only through the Holy Spirit. And after understanding the Holy Bible, therefore, you see on the table, what is there? Six plus six loaves of bread. 
Bread in the Bible means what of God? Jesus said, no, the man shall not leave a bread alone. So, Bible, in the Bible, bread means word of God. So, this had six plus six loaves. That means what? Six and six. How much? 66. 66 books of the Bible. Two portions. New Testament, Old Testament. So, upon this bread, uh, you see, what was there? Incense was there. It is only through the Holy Spirit that we are able to understand the word of God. You see, daily it has to be cleansed. So daily we need to take our filthiness of the flesh. We should remove all our bad habits. Then only what will happen? Huh? We will receive more of understanding. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 and 1 Peter 2, 9 is also there. You see, and uh, in between these two was a golden incense altar. The high priest, sorry, the priest used to come trim the lamp. Then he used to go towards the shoe bread, take the incense, the fist of it, and he used to offer it upon the incense altar. Then the smoke used to come. That used to fill the second veil. That means when God gives us the Holy Spirit, as we understand the word of God, we should develop character. As we develop character, this character is being tested daily when God puts it upon what? Fire. Eh? Fire in the Bible means what? Trials and testings. First Peter 4 12 eh? and 1 Corinthians 3 11 to 15. James 1 12. It says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, he shall receive the crown of life. Eh? When we are tested, when you are put to fire, what type of character are we expressing? Wild or bad character or good character? Dear brethren, we need to develop good character in us. We should never get spoiled. That means we should never lose our good character when you put to fire. When we are tested. When we are tested, if we show good character, resemblance of Christ, that smell, that incense, that is like incense to God, a pleasing sacrifice to God. And then, after this only, after the incense getting passed through the second veil only, high priest only once a year is to go to the most holy. So we have got only one opportunity to go to the heavenly salvation. We can never go, we can never decide, I'll well, come tomorrow, day after tomorrow, come again, go back. No, no, no. Only one and last opportunity. Come, decide and quit the earthly salvation and the, you see, heavenly salvation. So, in the most holy, there was only one thing. The Shekinah glory was there. That represents the presence of God. That means, that represents the heaven itself, the heavenly salvation. So, this represents the God himself. So, how? If you see, there was the Ark of the Covenant. Upon this, there was a mercy seat. In the Ark of the Covenant, what was there? Three things were there. Huh? We saw now, the golden pot with the manna. It used to never get rod there. Aaron's butter rod. And third one is the, you see, the Ten Commandments. So what does it represent? The manna that was collected daily by the people of Israel outside, it used to get spoiled. But the manna in the tabernacle never gets spoiled. What does it mean? That means the life which we are living today in the world, it is spoiled. It gets expired. Do we have expired date? Yes. Today we live, tomorrow we die. That is our expiry date. You see, but uh, God has promised us to give the divine nature. If the same life is transferred and transformed into the most holy, we can attain the divine nature. God has promised us a divine nature where incorruptible, where death is not a possibility at all. John 6, chapter 49 to 51, Revelation 2, 17, you see, and 1 Corinthians 15, 42, you see, and uh, what does Aaron's potato represent? When Aaron was selected, other elders grumbled against him. So God put a test and told everybody to bring a uh, almond rod. And they placed everything in the tabernacle that day. And uh, the next day, you see, Aaron's rod was the only rod that was uh, not only budded, it flowered and fruited. That means we have to be the royal priesthood. If we have to be of the chosen royal priesthood, only rod is not sufficient. Today, many Christians have only rod, authority. 
Oh, we have Krishna. No use. We should have what? Fruit. We should have what? Flower. Fragrance should be there. Beauty of character. Smell. Good smell should be there. Not only saying good, hello, bye-bye, tata. How are you? No. Come out from the heart. Love from a sincere heart. Huh? Bible says no. Jesus saw in Nathalene. What did he say? Yeah, Israelite in the in whom there is no guy. No hypocrisy should be there. Then fruit. Fruits of the Holy Spirit should be there. You see, then only we can be the chosen priesthood. First Peter 2 9. Huh? Read brother. First Peter 2 9. First Peter 2 9 brother. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should see for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ah, you are called out of darkness to show the praises of God, not to only say praise, praise the Lord. No, no, no. Your life should bring praises to God. Then, the third thing that was there was the tablet, tablet of the law, the Ten Commandments. Now, law. What does the law represent? Who reads the law today? Judges, lawyers, eh? the church, if we are faithful, we will be what? Judges with Christ. We are going to judge the whole world. That means we should be expert in the law now itself. We should know God's law, the word of God thoroughly. You see? And uh, what the three things together represents, uh, God is going to give us the divine nature, you see, the priesthood and the judges. That means, that means the three things the church is going to do with Christ when he is going to rule on this earth for a thousand years. They shall be kings, priests, and judges all over the world. Read Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, brother. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Hmm. They say in holy is he that have part in the first resurrection, and the, and so the second death has no power, but they shall be priest, priest of God, and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Mm, they shall reign with him a thousand years. They shall be priests and kings. You see? Uh, they shall also be judges, dear brand. This is the work that Christ, uh, along with the church, is going to do in a thousand years. Therefore, these things reached the most holy place. And uh, you see, upon that one, what was there? Single piece of gold. Cherubs were there. This signifies the oneness between God. Jesus and the church. John 17, 21, Jesus said, no. Ah, Father, I pray that they may also be one, even as we are one. So, oneness among the church and the, uh, and uh, Jesus and the uh, Almighty God. So, here the cherubs and the Shekinah glory represents the four important attributes of God and mainly the presence of God was always there. So, if you need to pass on to the presence of God, and attend the divine nature, we need to go through this process. Hence, this tabernacle was given as a typical model signifying the heavenly things. Okay? I hope uh, it was fruitful and useful. Please go through the recording uh, and the notes. Any questions, any doubts you have, you can ask me later.